Hello, my name is Niza Norjiba Mangondaya and I was assigned to talk about feminism. Feminism is the belief in social, economic, and political equality of sexes. In simple terms, it's gender equality. Although largely originating in the West, feminism is manifested worldwide and is represented by various institutions committed to activity on behalf of women's rights and interests. Throughout history, women were confined to the domestic sphere while public life was reserved for men. Before the late 19th century, women were often taken for granted and were not seen to be as capable as men. At that time, it seemed very natural to the society that men had more power and strength compared to women and that women weren't meant for the outside world. They see women to be as fragile as a glass. Women were prevented from conducting business without male representative, be it father, brother, husband, legal agent, or even son. Married women could not even exercise control over their own children without the permission of the husband. Moreover, women had little or no access to education and were barred from most professions. Even as of today, in some parts of the world, such restrictions on women continue. Yes, they did not stop! There's a lot to unfold in feminism. But let's talk about some major factors of it. Let's start with abortion rights. Leaders of the Women Liberation Movement were clear that women should have reproductive freedom and safe access to legal abortion, making the choice for their reproductive status free of discrimination and without the interference by paternalistic medical professionals. In simple terms, it's the woman's body, her rights, her health, her choice, and her choice only. Okay? Now, let's talk about how men could not accept the word no. I'm talking about rapist men. Men who violate women simply because they couldn't stop their libido from running wild and couldn't stay in celibacy for a day. But then, women are blamed for having provoked men to sexually harass them, either with their over-friendly demeanor or, or more importantly, through their seductive clothing. <laughs> no. Victims of sexual abuse and rape were often asked what they were wearing at the time of the mishap, thus accusing them of being at fault. Which is clearly true because baby clothings are so seductive to grown-up men. Honestly, if provocative clothing was indeed the problem, we wouldn't have had repeat cases of infants and old women being brutally raped. What? Did they entice men with their revealing clothes too? No, they couldn't simply find a woman who is willing to be with them so they find anything with a female genitalia to end their days of celibacy. Furthermore, rapists spend nine or four years in prison, which is really ridiculous. Anyway, if you go to this website, you can see what various women were wearing at the time of their mishaps, which is clearly not seductive at all, because there was a woman wearing a military uniform. Abortion rights and violence against women aren't even half of what drove feminism, but they are two of the major reasons. Keep in mind that for some, the goals of the feminist movement were simple let women have freedom, equal opportunity, and control over their lives. Thank you very much for watching.